Hello and welcome back to another video in the complete web dev series. In this chapter, we are building a content management system using object oriented programming. Um, and so in the last video, we had set up our GitHub repository and cloned our repo on, onto our local machines. Uh, in this video, what we're gonna do is go ahead and set up our, um, we're gonna set up our database uh, so that we don't have to worry about that anymore. So go ahead, I'm gonna switch over to my screen now. And what I'd like for you to do is just make sure that your uh, exam is up and running. For me, that is sudo opt lamp exam start. And then I will put in my password here and it says that mine is already running. So if yours is already running too, you are good to go. Go ahead and switch over now to your browser and just type in localhost forward slash PHP my admin and that will open up a database management tool here that we can build our database with. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new database, uh, click new and go ahead and call this uh, the same thing as your project. I'm just going to do CMS. Make sure that you have UTF-8 MB4 General CI selected here and then hit create. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create, um, we're going to have four tables uh, in this database that we're going to need. And so the first table uh, that we're going to create is our articles table. Now this articles table is going to hold our articles on our from our blog site. So go ahead and create a a table and call it articles articles and it's going to have one two three four five six seven eight nine columns here so you can go ahead and increase this to nine and hit go so this will create your table here and the first column that we're going to create is um, going to be our id of course um, that with a type of integer and we're going to go ahead and make this an auto increment and make sure it is the primary key. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create some timestamps here. Um, so we'll do a created underscore at. Uh, this will keep our uh, date time field. So we're gonna make that a date time. And uh, we'll go ahead and allow that to be null uh, just to make our lives a little bit easier. And then we're gonna go ahead and set up um, and update it at as well. So we can keep track of the last time the article was updated. And that will also be a date time field. Go ahead and set that to allow null. Then we're gonna create another column here. Um, this will be our user underscore ID. Uh, this will also be an integer. And um, what we're gonna do here is create an index um, here. And this will just be a regular index. And you can give this a name and just give it the same name, user underscore ID and hit go. The next thing that we're going to do is add a column uh, to hold our title. And we're going to make our title a variable character, so a varchar. And for the length on this, we'll go ahead and do 255 characters. Um, we're going to make this not null. Uh, and that should be it. The next thing we're going to do is add a body. Now this body is going to hold all the HTML because remember we're going to make a WYSIWYG and it will hold the contents of our article. So this will need to be a text field. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is have an image. <clears throat> the image is going to be a uh, variable character and we'll go ahead and create that with a <clears throat> 255 character limit as well. We'll make that not null. Also the body, go ahead and make that no, not null. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and leave user ID as to null because make sure that they have a user ID um, on there. Uh, but you can go ahead and click null. We'll, we'll handle that sort of thing inside of the application itself. The next thing we're gonna do here is add a status. And the status will be a var variable character, so varchar. And let's just make this a length of 50 uh, for now. This status is gonna hold whether or not it's uh, public or private. Um, and then the last column we're gonna need here is our category underscore ID. This will be an integer. Um, and what we're gonna wanna do here is go ahead and make that uh, null, make the uh, one before it null as well or allow null. And then we're gonna add an index to this one as well because we're gonna search by, um, we're going to search by category ID. So category ID, we'll make sure that's the column here and hit go. 
And um, there we go. That is all the columns that we're going to need for our articles table. So just go ahead and scroll down a little bit and click save. Uh, if all went well, it should take you here to, and you should have an articles uh, table now with the structure that we had just defined. The next thing that we're going to do is create a table to hold our categories. So go ahead and click new right here. And um, for the table name, just call this categories. Um, and the categories table is going to need only, let's see, one, uh, two. We're just gonna need two here. So let's go ahead and create an ID. We'll make that an auto increment with a primary key here. And then we'll need a name. This will be the name of the category. And this will be a variable character with a max length of 255. Um, that is all we're going to need to be able to do for this table. So go ahead and click save. So now we have an articles table and a categories table. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is create a users table and this will hold our logged in users. <clears throat> so go ahead now and create a new table by clicking new here. And um, we'll give this a name of users. And we need a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine columns on this table as well. So we'll add five more here. And that will create a, a total of nine columns. So go ahead and give this an ID. Uh, we'll make that an auto increment and a primary key there. We're going to go ahead and do timestamps as well. So we'll do created at, and that will be a date time. Uh, make sure you allow null. Um, the next thing we do is an updated at column. We'll also make that a date time field, allow null. The next one that we want is <clears throat> we want to do a first name. So we're just going to do F name. That will be a variable character of 255 and we will allow null there as well. And then we're going to do another one for L name for the last name. We'll do a variable character 255 there. The next thing that we want to do is an email. So do an email. We'll make that a variable character and we can do a max of 155 on that because that's the maximum length an email can be. The next thing that we'll do is a password. Now this password isn't going to store plain text. It's going to store a hash, but we'll make that a variable character with a length of 75. The next thing that we want is an ACL. Now the ACL is, could be a list and it could be as long as we want that to be. Um, so we're going to make this a text, but it, for this specific project, we could make that a variable character, but let's go ahead and make that a text. And then the, um, and I missed some of these, but make all these allow null, all of them. Uh, and then the very last one that we're going to need here is one called blocked. Now blocked is going to be a toggle. Um, so it'll be a Boolean. So we can actually create a tiny int here with a length of one. And then over here um, by default, go ahead and click on the default and choose as defined and just put a zero in there so that when it creates a row, it's gonna have a zero by default so they won't be blocked when you create them. So that's it. So we can just scroll down here and hit uh, save. Let me make sure there's not any indexes. Okay, I think I'm good there. All right, so there we go. Um, and actually, we probably did need an index on that. So let's go back here to this users table, click on structure, and then let's go ahead and add an index. <clears throat> so scroll down to this indexes section here, and um, let's go ahead and create an index on one column and hit go. And uh, we want this to be uh, email, and go ahead and change it to a regular index. And then in the column, Go ahead and choose the email column there and then hit go. And that will create an email uh, index for us because we're going to be searching on these users by the email. So we're going to go ahead and need an index for that as well. Uh, the last thing that we go, table we're going to need is a user sessions table. And this will actually store um, some information about our user. So go ahead now and um, click new. And for the table, we're going to do user underscore sessions. And um, just go ahead and right here, we don't need to add any additional columns. Let's give it an ID. It's going to be an auto increment with an in primary index. Uh, let me just check something real quick. Okay. 
Um, and then what we're going to do is create a user underscore ID column, which will also be an integer. Now this will store, um, this will be a, a foreign key, but we're not going to set up any sort of foreign key constraint here. Um, but what we will do is go ahead and add an index here. Um, so go down and uh, create this as an index and we'll give it a name of user underscore ID and hit go. Uh, go ahead and allow null, I guess. Not really necessary. Uh, and then we're going to create one called hash. And this will be a variable character with 50 characters. Um, and this one will also create an index on it. Uh, we'll create a single column index. And we'll call this hash. And we will choose the column hash here and hit go. Uh, and that should be it. So go ahead and go down here and hit save. And once you've done that, you will have a database um, that I'm calling CMS. Go ahead and call your CMS as well. And you will have the articles table, the categories table, users table, and user sessions table. That are, that's the only four tables we're going to need for this project. Um, and so we're well on our way. In the next video, what we're going to do probably is talk a little bit about pretty URLs and get our um, application working um, with pretty URLs. So I will see you guys there.